Welcome back, folks. It's Wednesday, July 19th, 2023. On this day in 1941, the first class of Tuskegee Airmen commenced training at the Tuskegee Institute. Today, let's talk about Mobile's size, space command and abortion, presidential race fundraising, and Auburn's play calling. I'm Mike Morgan, and we're down in Alabama. Suddenly, there are a whole lot more Mobile residents than there were a day ago. AL.com's John Sharp reports that a special election has resulted in the annexing of three areas, the Cottage Hill Corridor, as well as Kings Branch and Orchard Park areas. Voting down annexation were the residents in an area called the Airport Boulevard Corridor. According to Mobile Mayor Sandy Stimson, the newly annexed areas will receive emergency medical services immediately and city trash services by October 1st. The additions come with 19,789 new residents. That pushes Mobile's population past Birmingham's and Montgomery's and makes the port city the second largest in the state behind only Huntsville. And if you listen closely, you can hear someone from Birmingham say something about how it'd be different if you counted its suburbs. There could be fallout from the federal government's U.S. Space Command indecision in the form of legislation. AL.com's Lee Roop reports that Congressman Robert Adderholt, an Alabama Republican, has introduced a measure that would stop the government from building, buying, or leasing public buildings based on the availability of abortion services. In the debate over where to place Space Command's permanent headquarters, Colorado lawmakers have made the argument that Alabama's Human Life Protection Act would negatively affect staffers seeking abortions. Among co-sponsors are Congressman Barry Moore of District 2 and Dale Strong of District 5, which includes Huntsville, the home of Redstone Arsenal, which has been ranked as the top site for the headquarters during this very drawn-out selection process. Here in Alabama, we still give Donald Trump more money than we do Dollar General. Now, that's an exaggeration, but we're pretty generous with both. AL.com's Ramsey Archibald reports that the former president is easily leading the fundraising game among Alabama donors with $381,000 so far. He's pulled in 80% of the number of individual donations and 65% of the dollars donated in Alabama. Distantly following Trump in total dollars received is Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, 62000 and then U.S. Senator Tim Scott, both Republicans. In the number of individual donations, Trump is trailed by Scott and then former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley. You know, it happens to the best of us. We get a little older. We're focused more on the big picture. We might lose a little edge on some details. Then we sign a huge deal with an SEC football power and hire guys to do the play calling for us. You thought I was talking about you for a minute. Now, I was doing sports in Tallahassee when Birmingham native and riverboat gambler offensive strategist Bobby Bowden pretty much stopped calling the plays at Florida State. He handed those keys to Brad Scott and later Mark Richt. But occasionally you'd glance down the sideline and Coach Bowden would put on the headset and you could almost hear the home crowd hold its breath, waiting on that double reverse. Well, AL.com's Matt Cohen reports that Auburn coach Hugh Freeze, speaking at SEC Media Days, said he is beyond his best play-calling days, and he's had some good ones. But this week, he even took on part of the blame for some of his losses while he was coaching at Liberty. Quote, I haven't felt like I was quite on my game, but I could still manage a game and figure out a way to win, end quote. Freeze said he hired former Tulsa head coach Philip Montgomery specifically for play-calling. We're 45 days from the Auburn and Alabama season openers. Thank y'all so much for listening. We'll be back here again tomorrow. Until then, y'all come on by and see us on the internet at AL.com.